Yo guys, so welcome back to another episode on the channel. Exciting one for you today and a video I've been wanting to make for a while. And I actually need your help with this one. So basically, ever since I sold my old motorhome, which I'll put a picture on the screen now of, it was an eight meter long bus, it was huge. And ever since I sold that, which I kind of regret, I've wanted to get a smaller van that we can take on day trips, long weekends away, and just have a vehicle or a, a, a van that we can stay in for a few nights if we needed to between traveling to locations. This video, I'm gonna show you around the new, what is gonna be the new adventure bus. So this is the Ford Transit Custom. I got it a couple of weeks ago. I've driven it and used it for a few weeks on a trip to Europe. And I plan to do some pretty cool conversions to this, but I actually need your help with deciding on what to do to this van. Motorhome conversions, van conversions, creating a livable vehicle out of a van. There's so many different things you can do to them and I find absolutely fascinating what you can do and what people have done with vehicles nowadays. The van is fully converted inside already, but, it's not very mountain bike friendly. So it's not perfect for what we need it for and what we want it for. So that's where I need to do some modifications to it and some customization to make it work for what we want to do. So the 2016 plate Ford Transit Custom and it's in this cool gray color, which I think is pretty damn smart. It is a short wheelbase, it's not a long wheelbase version, but as you'll see in a minute for what I want to do with it, I don't think that's too much of a disadvantage. Let's look at the front. Pretty nice leather upholstered seats which isn't factory, I don't think. Six gears, which I wanted in a van, cruise control, electric jazzy things. It basically does everything you would want it to do. And it's a really, really nice vehicle to drive. Like it doesn't feel anywhere near as big and cumbersome as my last motorhome, which was really tough to drive because you always had to be thinking of how long the thing was. You always had to plan ahead as well. So you couldn't just drive somewhere because of how big it was. You had to plan and think like, where am I going? Is there going to be height restrictions? Where are we going to park the thing? Where are we going to water from? Because it was, it was literally twice the length of this van. But because this is like 2.1 meters high, I think it is, with the pop top roof, it still fits in small car parks. You can get it anywhere and it feels like it drives like a car. So it's amazing. Heated driver's seat, which I haven't had to use yet. This double seat swivels to make the cab in the back bigger. Here we go. That is the beast. It's pretty much what you'd expect from like a van size conversion, like from this. It's like what you'd expect in like a VW Transporter or you know, like a similar size one like that. Two burners. And I sink with a, a mixing bowl for a washing up bowl. Running water, some power units, mains plug sockets if we're on like a campsite or something. We've got plenty of storage going on. Pots and pans, a mini fridge, which is quite nice. Cutlery, a diesel heater, which I've not had to use just yet, but that might come in handy for winter. Curtains, windows that open and close, a rock and roll bed. Exactly what you'd expect from a van this size. Now, although this is really fancy and has all the bells and whistles already, it's not ideal for what we need it for. On our recent trip to Europe, it was kind of impractical really, because we were carting around two and three bikes and all spare wheels and spare everything. So the van wasn't really kitted out for what we needed it for. Like we had all the bikes in here in the living space. And when we went to sleep at night, because we had three people in the van, me, Amanda and Jamie, we had the bikes on the front seat with the uh, rags in between them protecting the seat and the bikes. The rock and roll bed folded out, one person slept here and me and Amanda slept in the in the pop top. In fact, I'll put the pop top up now and show what it looks like and show you how big the van actually gets with the pop top up. If any of you guys are considering getting a pop top because they make a van this small, massive. There it is with the pop top up. It's got a window on the front as well, so you can open that whole section. So if it's a nice day and you're in a nice location, you can lie up there drinking your morning coffee. Looks quite nice actually, the maroon color and the gray. So we've also got the awning as well, which comes all the way out. The awning comes really far out. And obviously that gives you even more space outside the van when it's bad weather or it's really hot and you want to get some shade. I'll show you the cool thing about pop tops. So at the minute with the roof down, this is the roof here. I, I, I can't stand up in this, like that's that's me there. But if we push the pop top up, <laughs> I can literally put my hands above my head in here. And that's the beauty of one of these things. Look at that, I'm actually stood up now in the, in the van. So that makes all this area much more usable for a big guy like me. You can stand up and make your coffee, you can stand up and cook, wash, 
and just do things. And that bed up there is actually quite big. You can fit two people comfortably up there. Look, I'll show you how elegant it is to get up into the pop top. It is hot up here, but let's see what's open. We've got blinds with fly screens on. And then this whole front section. And you can actually take, there's a zip here which you can take this whole thing off. It's plenty big enough for two people up here. We've got a real thin mattress and some sleeping bags, which is enough at the minute for summer. And obviously it frees up space downstairs and makes it a bit more of a, a nicer place to stay. So you can kind of see how it's usable, but if you've got mountain bikes, it's not, not ideal. Another cool thing we've got going on. These are screen, oh, these are where I store my screens for the front of the motorhome when it gets really hot. Just put them there for a second and I'll show you something cool. So you can kind of see now, I've swiveled these two front seats around, how much more space we have. Look at that, sat here, two people could sit there. Plenty of space for everything going on. Loads of space up there. So we primarily obviously use this van for mountain biking and we work a lot on the road. Again, you guys will have to tell me what you think of this because these are just ideas I've come up with or I've seen. I'm obviously sat in this double seat here, which is a great place and it feels nice with the door open and stuff, but I would like to have some sort of like post that comes up here that folds away with a tiny little table here so I can edit on, I can work on, and obviously somebody can edit and work on the other side of me. Speaking of which, that's the table set up there, which clips into the kitchen unit. Yeah, look. <clears throat> so one person could sit on the other side as well, editing or working or eating or whatever they want to do. So there's plenty of space, but obviously you can imagine if there's bikes in here, then it's it gets a little bit complex because every time we were pulled up and camped up or whatever parked up, we had to have the bikes outside, which is, isn't ideal. It's not that practical really. The two ideas I obviously have is to find a way to mount the bikes on the back of the van with some sort of bike rack, which I'll get to in a second, or we store them in the van, which is obviously going to be a compromise, which I find everything is with this van because it's so small. And that's something I had to kind of like accept when I got the van that you're not going to be able to have everything you want the way you want it because of like the small, you know, the size of the van. So everything's a compromise. That's one thing I've learned. So another bike storage solution idea I had was creating more room in the back of the van, inside the van, by moving the rock and roll bed. So obviously if you guys know anything about vans, I know a little bit about them, but not too much. These rock and roll beds right now, this one I have is fixed, but I've done some research and it looks like you can get rails that go on the floor for these things. So you can obviously move the rock and roll bed forward and backwards, which then gives you more space behind the seating area. Because obviously once this rock and roll bed is folded out and people are sleeping on it, this whole area is taken up. And obviously if we do get rails for the floor, the rock and roll bed, we're still going to be limited in terms of how much we can fit behind them. In fact, I'll show you the garage now. Let's go on the back and we'll talk about what I plan to do with the garage. So that's the back of the van. And as you can see, it's not the biggest because the rock and roll bed is a huge thing. We've got quite a lot of storage there. We've got loads of storage underneath. All my electrics there, which will have to be moved if we move the rock and roll bed. Storage all the way down there, which is real long. Storage cupboards here, which is great for bike kit. Windows with curtains on just to hide wherever we've got in the back. I wanted to make this more usable for bikes. So if we did move the rock and roll bed forward and we had more space in the garage, I was thinking of a two main ideas actually, well, three. First idea was to have some sort of bike mount or bike work stand mounted on the door, which I've seen some people do. So that could mean if we were at a race, and we want to do some work on our bikes and make sure it's running sweet, we could open the door, attach our bike here, and actually work on our bike. So that's kind of like a little practical way to use the space here. I was also thinking of having some sort of storage on these doors as well, because obviously at the minute, with these wind, this is a window behind here, but it's blacked out. This is kind of unusable space. But I was thinking of putting maybe some ply on there or some wood that I could attach things to. So then we have all these, all this space on these two doors to have holders for shoes, maybe even like a fold down work table or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments if you have any ideas like this, because I would love to have your input. Another idea I was thinking of putting in was seeing if we could utilize this cupboard a little better. So maybe having some sort of pull out tray that comes out so we can have like oils and stuff for cleaning bikes and stuff in there. Same goes for this door. We can have some storage things all in here. Showering as well. I didn't find showering too bad of a problem. We just went in rivers because I just love swimming in rivers. 
But I'm wondering if there's a way that we can plumb a water system into this van so we can have hot or hot and cold water running to have showers out the back of the van. Because obviously if we have a cubicle in the, in the van, it's just gonna take up way too much space. So I'm thinking maybe some sort of like pull out hose so you can literally just rinse yourself off and have a nice cold shower and feel fresh for driving or sleeping in the van wherever you are. A final point on this was bike storage on the back of the van. I have a tow bar at the house which hasn't been fitted yet, which is gonna go on here. And I wanted to get a bike rack where you could store the bikes on the back of the van, preferably on a vertical bike rack, which I've seen certain countries that have, have them. I believe you can get them in the UK. It just seems to be a little bit more difficult because they can't go onto a tow ball. <laughs> you have to get like a hitch receiver, which is proven to be a bit of a challenge, but I think we found a solution, which is pretty cool. So that'll allow me to take four bikes, essentially, four or maybe even more bikes on here on the back. There you go, look, there's the, um, space seating and working area there storage the 12 volt fridge i'll tell you about the van key sign in a second rock and roll bed plenty of storage up there pop top roof have you got your key signs so i put these up because ah, this ford transit i don't know if anybody knows anything about these vans but they have a habit of locking themselves automatically after 10 seconds when you get out or something like that. So it's very easy to leave your key in the van and I don't wanna be that person that locks my keys in the van. So that's for that reason. But again, let me know in the comments if you guys know of any solutions to fix this or is this a common Ford thing? I don't know, but it's a nightmare and I don't want it to happen to me, so. So that's the new adventure van. This is the first video in hopefully a video series I'm gonna do on the conversion and customization of the van. Just take you guys on a bit of a journey so you can see what we're up to and what we've been doing to the van. And yeah, if you guys have got any input or feedback on the van so far or what you'd recommend, or I'd be very much appreciated if you could help me out because there's literally an unlimited amount of things you could do on these things. And I wanna make it as optimized as possible for transporting bikes around, traveling around, basically doing as much as we can with the space we've got. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.